kids, welcome to a Bits and Bites episode of Stylus Rumble. It, sorry my face is not available tonight. I dropped my camera and I'm too lazy to pick it up. I just wanted to do a little quick thing because of a question I got from the Toon Boom forums about making control handles. For those of you who've never used control handle before and you're not really sure what I'm talking about, I'll just set up a basic one. So we need a collection of little modules here. One is a handle, so for this case I'm using the letter B. I'm going to copy and put it on this layer as well. So we have this one drawing and it has a line layer that has our little A here and then our overlay layer has our B. We're going to need our layer selectors. So we have a line and then our overlay is coming out here. So now we can grab our handle and move it around. Then the only issue there would be this shows up in the render view and we can pop in a remove transparency which this sounds like it would remove the transparency but it, what it actually does is make whatever you are connecting it to transparent, okay? So remove color transparency means, means to remove the color, and remove alpha transparency means to remove the alpha. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't remove the transparency, it makes it transparent. So this is the worst named module in the history of the universe. So that's how you'd make a little handle like this. So you just have something off to the side. Say this is behind the character. It's the back arm or something. So if you've got a pretty simple looking little dude and one arm's in the front like this and the other arm's in the, the back, the easiest way to make that clickable is by just making a little handle like this on an overlay layer. You can create one on its very own peg like this if you feel the need and just remove a transparency. The one thing about this remove transparency that's important to remember is that the handle itself does need to have a little bit of transparency. If this is 100% opaque, it won't remove it. So I guess that's why the word transparency is there. I, it's just a confusing name, but now I have this item, and whenever I select that with my animation tools, it's going to move anything below it. You can use this for any number of things if you're willing to open up this box and look in here, uh, all these dealies. So this has a drop-down menu. If you've got a bunch of animation on here and you, are, you don't want it anymore, you can set this to local, and it will zero out the box like that. Um, I'll just pop down here. Put a bunch of keyframes and here's all those keyframes if i hit local the keyframes are still there but it takes it off position x so it will clear out if you want to clear out all of them you'd have to go and clear them all out one by one but you can take out keyframes that way this is really convenient if you have something like a transparency Put my transparency in here and now if I've accidentally keyframed this and I just want a uniform transparency, I can set this to local and then it doesn't have any cool little function. The next pile of functions, you can create curves and create eases. That kind of stuff is a little easier done down here if you're animating. The Bezier. If we don't want to hook this guy up to this one, say this one's part of a hierarchy already, but we want this one to control the X or the Y of this one, you could use in the X, Y, and Z. You can hook them all up into what we can do is share the functions of this guy here. So I'll go down to my timeline and I need a keyframe. That's an important thing to remember. Then right click on the item and share the functions. What that does is actually creates independent there we go. It creates independent columns for each of these guys as opposed to just one column. If I just go to that guy like item 9, that just has one column, but this one now has a pile of them. And if I go in here, these boxes can get quite busy, but now we have the eight options available to us. So I'm going to make this 7x follow the position of this x. So now whenever I move this along the x-axis, it's going to follow the handle. But if we move it up, it won't follow the handle. <laughs> See? Because we've only hooked it up to this one guy. But we can also hook up these, and it can get a little bit tedious to do that. So now this one will move up and down and all the way around with the handle, even though they're not connected in any way. Okay, And this can still be hooked up in the hierarchy. In fact, we can actually still hook it up to this. It's just now it's going to double the speed because this is telling it 
to move x and then the curve function we've added here is telling it to move x again so if you need something that's going twice as fast as something else there's a simpler way to hook that up than if you than if you were trying to do it by hand this would be kind of cool if you were doing something with multiplaning but because we have this perspective it's it's kind of an unnecessary thing that is really useful if you need a handle that is not connected in here you can also connect that to several items. So if I put another guy in here, just for funsies, we're going to hook the X up to the Y. And we're going to hook the Y up to the X. <laughs> so now when we move our guy up and down, he moves left and right. And this guy, when he moves left and right, will move him up and down. Whoa. Okay. Right now I'm just throwing random stuff in there. But there are certainly going to be places where you need to rotate, say, five or six different things. So if these were cogs, got some sort of fancy cog device. So if you have something like this, where all of these different cogs have to move at the same speed, and obviously a designer would do a much better job, you can have this guy rotate, and all of those guys, assuming that they're on their own layer, will move at the same rate. Okay, so I've set up my five wheels here and I've set up all their pivot points in the center. The next thing I would want to do is come in here and we'll want to go down to our rotation which is called angle Z and then we'll go to the curve and we'll hook up the angle Z to this control handle. So I'm going to hook up all five of these without making you go through watching them all. So now all five of these are hooked up to this one control handle, and I'll make him a little more visually savvy so you can see. Now if I rotate this, all of these guys are rotating at the same pace. Whee! Like if the animator needs to animate 500 wheels on 60 scenes, just hook them all up to a control handle. And these guys still are connected. But you can see the X and Y are not connected, so they have no bearing on this. So if you were using this control handle just for these guys, you can just move it out of your scene. And now it's disappeared. Or, of course, you can throw in your remove transparency, which I've deleted. <laughs> so now anyone who's really savvy will know that some of these are not supposed to be moving in the same direction or some might need to be moving at a different speed and that's where expression columns come in so what i have to do here i go down to my x sheet go to columns and add columns shift c if you're into your hotkeys and this is how you would add a drawing column it's type drawing there's sound columns 3d path rotation bezier curve so you can create your own curve you can make ease curves, blah, blah. What we need is expression. And we're going to call this expression one. We'll just add and close. I'm not going to make a ton of expressions. And it usually leads, if you're looking for it, it's all the way in the far right. And it's a little bit of a different color. It's like a gray. Now, if we double click this expression, opens up an expression box. So now here's where things get a little bit ridiculous because what, what you put in here has to be in, written in Python. So if you're not a, a programmer and I'm not a programmer, then you might need to phone a friend on this one. There are a few little things that are pretty simple to set up. Okay, so I've written a little script and it certainly is small. So I've just thrown this into WordPad so I can make it bigger. And you can see it easily, even if you're using, looking at a lower resolution screen. So this is a simple Python expression. I'm, I'm not even going to pretend I can teach you how to write Python. I'm just, I'm just not. Uh, I found this just by looking at the help menu on uh, the Toon Boom forums, they have a little bit of information and there's lots of stuff out there if you're interested in learning Python that people who know what they're doing can show you how to do. I'm just going to show you this very simple item that you have to remember the value and then these brackets and then little parentheses and then this garbage goes in there. So this little bunch of words tells it that you need to find this here. So instead of hooking up the Bezier curve, like here I'm going to Bezier 
x and then I'm finding the angle z. What you do, you can, you can use your local here to get rid of expressions that you've put on the thing. So you go into your x sheet and you find the angle z. These are a little bit narrow, so you, you might have to do a little searching. But it tells you what it's called here. It's called item hyphen p and I just copied it right into my word pad there. So you need this value stuff and now you can tell it, okay, it's using this, but I want it to be multiplied, I'm going to use multiplied by negative one. So this is just going to tell it whatever number this is, say it's 90 degrees, multiply that by negative one, that would make it negative 90 degrees. So your simple arithmetic there will give you enough to have something go backwards. So now we'll put it into our expression column apply and it's telling me where that is right now it's on negative like a big pile of numbers I'm gonna hit OK and now I'm going to choose I'll just use this first one and instead of my rotation being hooked up to my Bezier curve I'm gonna go down to my expressions and here's the expression we just wrote now I'm gonna rotate this clockwise it's going to rotate that one counterclockwise so you can see that it doesn't update dynamically like these other ones do. If it's using a direct uh, curve, it has less trouble doing that, but it will work. It will take that little math expression that you've created and it will rotate your guy. There's expression. You can change the color of these. I'm going to make it like super bright. So now it's easier to find. You can change the expression here at any time. So you can have any simple numbers. So you can have the item value here multiplied times two if you want it to move twice as fast or times five if you want to move super fast. This might not necessarily be good for this, but it's good to know that you can use simple arithmetic in here. You can add this plus another handle or just any number of little things. If you want to learn more about Python, go and search friends to the wild wilderness of the internet. I'm sure someone can help you. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple little things that you can do with this. I'm going to add another expression column. Make sure it's an expression and we're going to call this expression 2. Add and close and that one probably went all the way over here. Now I'm going to use this handle again and what I'm going to do in a little bit of a roundabout way is connect this moving up and down to the transparency. So I can do that directly go to Bezier and then item 8 and the position X. So now the position of X, okay, and I'm going to take these off because if it's moving around, obviously you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. All right, so now the item is controlling this transparency with its X coordinates. So if I move this over here, you can see that I've hooked my transparency up to this handle. Weep, 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 weep. So this is a little bit easier to animate than opening up your transparency and going through here. The only problem is you have to move it, you can see I'm moving a half a mile to get a good chunk of transparency. So it's still not totally transparent, like let's see how far, yeah we'd have to go all the way over here. So it's a pretty big margin and that's where these expressions might come in handy if you're trying to make a little handle. You can go into my expression and open that, double click my expression box. What I need is this guy's stuff again. So there's his position X. If you're smarter than me, you can remember, oh, if this is called this, it's going to have that, but I'm, I can't remember this stuff, right? And But you need that value thing. So I've actually just saved this into another document that's just so filled with information I didn't feel like bombarding your eyes with it, but you can save out these little expressions and then just paste in the appropriate name. Okay, so now the position x is in here and we want that to be multiplied by let's say five times. So now once we hook this up, let me go to our transparency, instead of using that Bezier curve we're going to use the expression that we just created, expression 2. You can see the expression 1 is now hidden behind this which is really annoying but it is still there and you can hook two or three things up to the same expression, that's not a big deal. And now we only need to move our handle a small amount and we will get it to be transparent. Now the good thing with this is you can hook it up to pretty much anything. And the thing I promised to show 
is is the image switch the image switch is one of those things that's really annoying to hook up but it's so useful <laughs> this has a port 0 and a port 1 and a port 1 currently it's displaying port 0 which is this guy over here this dot if I change this to 1 it's now doing that you need to put keyframes on it down here so here's keyframe 1 here's keyframe 2 and now I have to move this and we got to do this there we go. So now this image switch is going back and forth between one and the next. Let me just extend my exposure so you can see this. Here's port zero, here's port one, and you can move back and forth. Or we can use the X of this guy, X axis here, that we've already got shared. We've already shared our X down here. And now I can actually hook this thing up to that item. So again, my Bezier, it's eight. I'm going to do it to the X, so moving left and right is going to set it up. If I reset this, it's coordinates and control points up here. So now, because the X is at zero, the port is set to zero. If I move this one, it's now set to one. So I can actually just use my handle to move back and forth, and I can animate that image switch. You could do this for as many image switches as you want. If you have 15 different image switches throughout a character to display something or display some like for patches or if you have a prop set up and you don't want to have to go through the trouble of opening up this box or something, you could create this little handle and you could give him what I like to do is I usually have a little square here. You want to make sure that you're using a color that's a little bit transparent so that you it's easily disappeared and I'm going to create a little background for this guy and I'm gonna figure out where my zero and my one is okay so here's my zero position and then I can set my X to one because that's gonna be my next position oop and this is my next position so I know that my square has to be this big now if I move it over you can see that there's a very small nudge factor on this one just because it's going from one to the next. So you could make an expression say that you want it to go half the speed so they have to move it a little farther to do it um, so that you can have a cute little handle. But I mean, that's not really necessary. It's, it's less useful than if you're using something like transparency, which has to go from zero to 100. But because this is just going from zero to one, you, you can just create a little box like that that they can move it back and forth in. And if you want to, Another thing I like to do is create a column that's called an expression, and I'm going to call it lock. So here's my lock. It's just called lock. It's empty, and I'm going to make it so that you can't move. Go down to my expression, and I'm going to put locks on these. So now the animator can't move that up or down. They can only move it left or right. That's all it does. And that way it kind of it stays in its little box. So you can't you can't prevent them from moving it way too far over that way, but you, you can prevent it from going up and down. So that's good if you have something that you don't want to translate, you only want to rotate, you can make little expression locks and you can lock out all of those. This lock, just in case you happen to see that just locks the scale one to the next. It doesn't actually prevent you from adding information. But by adding like this little empty expression, you can just tell the animators that you're not allowed to touch that. And they'll never figure it out. <laughs> Most of them will not figure out how to change it back because they don't know this is here. <laughs> oh, tricking animators. So that was a bit of a shotgun overview because I just wanted to um, answer a question for someone. But please, if, there, if this is unclear, please ask me to clarify and I will get back to you for surezies. You could you could message me on the Twitters or wherever you want to be. So thanks for dropping by and I uh, won't, I guess I didn't see you in this video, did I? Well, like, subscribe, share, yeah. See you in the next video. <laughs>